morning. How are you doing this fine, rainy sun Saturday morning? <laughs> um, we are really hoping that the weather breaks. I noticed when I went outside that it was slowing down, so keep our fingers crossed that the weather breaks. But my name is Kelly Murphy. I'm the principal here at Greenview Upper Elementary School. I am so happy to see you here, and I welcome you to Greenview. We have some information that we want to share with you today about the transition process and about just some things happening at Greenview in the coming year. So I welcome you to Greenview, and thanks again for coming out this morning. I have, for the last four years, been the principal here um, of Greenview Upper Elementary, 4th, 5th, and 6th grade building. There are going to be some enhancements coming to Greenview for next year. We're kind of looking at things a little bit differently in terms of how we are defining Greenview because we found that there is a definite difference between our fourth grade still very elementary students and our fifth and sixth grade transitioning to middle school type students. So in an effort to meet the needs of our varied population here at Greenview, we are looking at things a little bit differently for next year. So my role is going to change a little bit. I am going to serve as the fifth and sixth grade principal and that part of the building is going to be more of Greenview Middle School. And then Mr. Russell, who I will introduce here in a moment, is going to be serving as our fourth grade intermediate principal next year. So we're going to shift things up a little bit to meet the varied needs of our students and the whole pro hope to provide a more individualized learning atmosphere for our students. And we are very excited about the change. We think it's going to help enhance what's happening here at Greenview and that it will help to ease the transition from your small elementary school setting to Greenview. And Mr. Russell will get into that a little bit more. Before I introduce him, I just wanted to recognize some of our central office people who are here with us today. We have Dr. Veronica Motley here in the back. She's our assistant superintendent. I'd also like to recognize Ms. Sylvia Marshall. She's a teacher at Adrian. And we have Mr. Charbel Zachariah, who is helping us to video. So let's give him a round of applause. And Ms. Rhonda Fleming, who's just walking in, she works on the People's Services and our Registration Department, so thank you. Mr. Russell, Mr. Russell and I have worked together for the last two years, and we are without a doubt, don't break my glasses, I'm sorry. I need those. <laughs> we are without a doubt a family unit here at Greenview. Our administrative team functions very well together, and besides working together as professionals, we know a great deal about each other's personal lives and are there to support each other in our personal lives as well. So please know that we respect each other immensely and without my team and people like Mr. Russell to help me out, I couldn't get the job done. So we appreciate that. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Russell. I'm going to take this off first. I don't do well with microphones and usually my voice is loud enough anyways. Um, good morning, everybody, good morning. and welcome to Greenview. Uh, I have had the opportunity to speak in front of a lot of crowds. In my, in my former life, I was a college football coach, um, so I did a lot of recruiting. And I was on the road, talking to high schools, talking to parents and uh, potential players. Um, and I've done that all over the country. And right now, I'm the most nervous I've ever been in a public speaking opportunity. Uh, so I'm going to be a little vulnerable, okay? Uh, and the reason I'm so nervous is because this transition that you guys are here for is so important. Your children are so important. And they're very important to me. <clears throat> you don't know me yet, but you're going to. And um, already, I've been working damn hard for your kids and for you. So, I'm going to talk to you a few things. Uh, we're, let's get to the, the presentation. I'll feel a little bit better. Um, this third to fourth grade transition is huge. Okay, your learners are going to go from a lot of teacher-led instruction to now taking the responsibility for their education and learning for themselves. Uh, one of the biggest changes from third to fourth grade is how you're going to, to interpret or how you're going to interact with reading materials. Um, Third grade students uh, are, are learning how to read. Fourth grade students begin the process of reading to learn. 
that you have to be able to have a piece of information, whether it be a map, a chart, a graph, uh, nonfiction or fictional text, read it and then be able to justify a response with it. They have to justify that response through conversation and also in written text. So we're going to have to make sure we do a lot of work on the front end of reading uh, and, and making sure that we're not only just learning how to read, but in fact taking what we read and applying it to something else. Mathematics is gone from remembering my facts to now using that information of understanding multiplication or understanding division and then taking it and doing something with it. What is the area of this square? Triangle. Fraction. Decimals. Those things are coming in fourth grade and it's real. It's difficult. It's not easy for all our fourth graders. We have some supreme challenges. And I know that you guys know because you're with them at home practicing the homework with them. But those are the skills that they're going to have to master here in fourth grade. So every morning, I'm just this little, you're going to learn a little bit about me as we go through each slide. Um, as I go through this, there's little pieces of me and, and John Maxwell is a guy who I read a lot. Um, he's a, a guy on leadership. Um, and I really started this back when I was in college. And, and he has a book called The Daily Reader. I take a, a little glimpse at The Daily Reader every day and try and figure out, OK, maybe John is talking about something today that I didn't think about. Maybe I've been away from it for a couple of days. Let me go back and read those last couple of days. And they're all really quick excerpts of uh, larger pieces of, of, of his works. But, Today, I, th I found it very appropriate. Do I, as a leader, am I going to make your child better? And not only am I going to make your child better, am I going to make your family better? That's why I had those emotions in the beginning. I'm, <clears throat> we, all the people in this room, are a critical pivotal component to the end result of where your child is going to go. Very recently I had the opportunity to go back to Euclid Central Middle School. And they honored me with an award, no big deal, whatever, but I got the opportunity to thank those people who were the building blocks along the way. <coughs> they may not remember Mr. Russell from fourth grade when they were 35 years old. But still, there's going to be a decision that I made that had a pivotal impact on that person's life. So I question myself, what am I doing to make others better? I'm going to challenge my teachers with that every single day. I'm going to challenge my students every single day. But I'm also going to challenge you every single day, as I expect you to challenge me. <clears throat> so there's my goofy mug, um, <clears throat> and when you really get down to the brass tacks, I'm a pretty goofy guy. Um, I love comic books. Uh, I am, if, if you know, one of my fourth grade students just bought me a Marvel uh, book uh, with all the movie details. Um, just so you know, I saw Endgame twice. Okay, I saw it that you know late night showing, and then I uh, <coughs> skip <skipped> work <coughs> to watch it the next day. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Um, but I'm a huge Marvel comic books guy. Okay, so I graduated from Euclid High School in 2003. Uh, graduated from a little college, Teal College. Just if you literally if you drive down Mayfield Road and you just keep driving and you just keep driving and you head further east. If you drive for an hour and a half, you'll get to Teal College. You'll literally crash into the front of the school. Um, it was a great experience there. Played football there. Uh, graduated. My first job as a college football coach was there. Um, I, I've taught literally in a bunch of different places. All, I've taught all high school. Um, so I taught at uh, Leesburg High School in Florida, uh, Kent Roosevelt High School um, in Kent, Ohio, and uh, at Brush. Um, and uh, they, South Euclid, they, they kept me. They didn't say I had to go. Um, so, uh, and then this is my, uh, this is the conclusion of my third year here at Greenview, where I've served as a sixth grade principal uh, for two years and, and as a fourth grade principal. And then I'll be making my transition. We're all doing it together. So you guys are my first class uh, as the uh, building principal for the intermediate school. 
you're going to see these little <laughs> rugrats running around here today. They've gotten big, haven't they? Real fast. Uh, so you saw Brynn when she was just born, right? Now she's, she's big. She's my big girl. Um, but this is last week at the you know, Celebrate Moms event. Um, if you guys are new to Greenview or new to the district at all, you're going to see me at events, and I'm going to ask that you be there. All of these things are very important for our students. Uh, you're going to see me at this summer at Rock the Block. You're going to see you're going to see Mr. Russell. I'm going to be around because it's important for your children to be able to see me in their community doing the things that they're doing and being a part of it. Uh, but I've got my two beautiful daughters, Brynn and Blake. Uh, my beautiful wife, Hallie, will be bringing them at some point. She sold them that this was a carnival, um, so hopefully they have some sort of fun today. I want to tell you the structure which your kids are going to be going through a little bit, a little bit next year. Obviously, uh, this announcement was new, but it was not. Um, it has been something that we haven't been thinking about for a long time, but I just want to, we have a lot of more opportunities to talk and dig more deep into details. I'm going to be uh, pretty brief today. Uh, but what is the structure, the function, and the philosophy of Greenview? What are we trying to do here with your students? How are we going to make your student and your family better? I want to provide you some tips to ease the transition from third to fourth grade, because it's hard. It's going to be tough. And then have some fun afterwards. I saw it down in a multi-purpose room. they got this huge thing already set up. Right? It's going to be fun all over this place. So we got to make sure on a family fun day we actually get down and have some fun. And I'm going to change my clothes after this. I'm about to have you some fun. Okay? <laughs> So think about this, all right, as far as transition. As an educator, as a parent, uh, we all know that if we can eliminate the amount of transitions our kids have to go through, our kids will have a better day. Our kids will have a better experience within the things that they're, that they're involved with. So what we're trying to do here at Greenview is to limit the number of transitions that take place or ease the transitions. And with Mrs. Murphy having to oversee not only the the 6th to 7th grade transition, also meet with the three different elementary school principals and then homogenize that group and bring them to Greenview. That's a heck of a load. That is, I mean, that job right there is, if that were her only two responsibilities, would be a lot. But given the day-to-day -day operations, leading a instructional staff, uh, making sure the operations of the building are, you know, up to par, that job is almost impossible. So what the district wanted to do was make that responsibility a little bit more reasonable. It would be two head principals making that happen. One to bring your students in, one to send your students out. And we can make sure that we are, all those little things that previously as far as communication or anything got lost in the tracks, we can make sure that we're doing a better job at making sure those things don't get lost. So we know that we have our three lower elementaries, bringing them to Greenview, and then that conversation piece that happens between Mrs. Murphy and I, when we go from the intermediate school to the middle school, Greenview Middle School, that will be an in-house transition, and then obviously Mrs. Murphy is in charge of sending your babies out. Okay, so that's that's the the, the framework of the the new model that we're working with. So, you all have turned in off of uh, South Green and pulled in. You see this big school, right? And everybody always tells you how big Greenview is. It's so big. When I, went to, uh, when I was working at Brush and I was coming in here, I was like, okay. So I hadn't been in an elementary school. Remember, I told you, college football, I played, I coached. High school football, I coached. And I, had, I was recruiting, I was in high schools. I hadn't been in an elementary school in like 12, 13 years. I, know, I went to my like, sister's clap out for five minutes and I was in a parking lot. So I hadn't been actually in an elementary school in a long time. So... They said, oh, Greenview, okay, well, what does elementary school look like? Okay, so I came into the building, I'm like, this is an elementary school? This is bigger than what I used to be, you know, what I'm used to. And I said, how many grades? Well, four, five, and six. Okay, how many students? Uh, 750. Okay, that's a big school. What I want you to do is take another look, okay? Well, that just made it worse, because that's even bigger. I, I, I captured the overhang in there, right? It's a sprawling, gigantic campus. And imagine... We actually had our LRC, our, our library uh, teacher, Mr. Kaczynski, tracked it. It's like over a mile getting from one end of the building to the other end. And it takes like all these steps. And our teachers, at the end of the day, you can see them walking and sweating because they're getting their steps in and exercising in this building. I'm like, man, I can run sprints. I can have the kids run sprints. I can have the kids do stairs. Man, this is a great building. 
But yes, if you look at it like that, it's gigantic. But if you focus on where your students will be, Greenview Intermediate, it's not much bigger than Adrian, <clears throat> not much bigger than Roland, it's approximately the same size. And this is the area that your babies are going to be. It's not that big of a school. It's going to be uh, taken care of with, with great care. Uh, we've got teachers who've worked in your lower elementary schools that we've got, uh, Ms. Primantine, uh, Ms. Uh, Buchanan. They've been in the lower elementaries, know what the lower elementaries are like, and I've asked them, how can I make that experience more similar to the, what the parents are accustomed to here? I know that we've got, like I said, three different groups of parents, three different schools, three different cultures, but trying to work to homogenize that into what Greenview Intermediate can be. So the idea of the, the size, the bigness, I, wanna, I want that to be kind of wiped, wiped away as we move forward and just focus on Greenview Intermediate and Greenview, Greenview Middle. And when we make that transition to Greenview Middle, instead of it being a school with 750 or 800 students, now you're talking about a school that's got about 500 kids. Principal, assistant principal, and a trem tremendous amount of support. So by creating that division in the schools, we are creating a, a smaller environment for your student to be able to attend uh, a, a quality uh, education. So I just wanted to uh, talk about the campus, okay? So if we look at that big thing as the Greenview campus, uh, Greenview Intermediate and Greenview Middle, what are the differences? Okay, and again, like I said, this is going to be just some overview stuff, okay? As we go along the journey, we'll provide more details. But Greenview Intermediate is going to be a house for fourth grade students only. Okay, so your babies will not be, and the school setting will not be interacting with fifth or sixth graders. Fourth graders will be down in the, the wing like I showed you, where we're going to, when you go downstairs and look in the classrooms and stuff, they're just going to be in that area. Uh, elementary school model. So... Uh, if you've had a, a student who's been at Greenview before, that elementary school model that we've had, you've seen it really isn't successful. So me as a sixth grade principal, I was dealing with a lot of stuff. The kids are like, I feel so constrained. My teacher's got to walk me to the bathroom. Man, my cousin goes to another school, and he's in middle school, and I can just, he can just go down you know, to the bathroom by himself. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you got a point. And then I got into the fourth grade, and I'm like, Man, these kids need like more teachers to walk them to the bathroom because they're all over the place. Okay, so that dichotomy, okay, it's a wide variance between what a fourth grader needs and what a fifth and sixth grader need. And we're trying to accommodate both parties. So there's going to be the paired teaching team. So like I said, if you, if you guys were used to Greenview, how it looked before, uh, you may have teacher one and teacher two. Uh, teacher one may be the homeroom teacher. Teacher two may teach, uh, you know, ELA and uh, social studies. Teacher one may teach math and science. Okay, and that model that you're used to at Greenview, that's going to maintain in the fourth grade. Okay, that's going to look exactly the same. Nothing is going to change with that. Um, the the schedule, the way the schedule looks. Again, to limit the amount of transitions. Your students are not going to be going from one class to the next class, the next class, the next class, the next class, no. It's just going to be, uh, I mean, it's still an eight-period day, uh, but they're going to have 100-minute uh, blocks, okay? So um, you have a back-to-back -back block of math, or you have a back-to-back -block, back -back block of ELA, and then single blocks of either science or social studies, okay? It's time already. We gotta, so I gotta, I gotta cut it. I've been doing too much crying. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and I'll be talking a little bit more uh, about some more transitional things. So I'm going to skip ahead, um, just because some of the stuff we're going to cover, and I want to get to a few philosophical things. Okay. Uh, and literally, after uh, I kick it to Miss Marshall, you're going to be seeing me again after she's done with her tremendous presentation. But the Greenview way. What it is, is a desire, a strong, deep passion to help your child, help your family, reach its full potential. I'm going to make t-shirts, get wristbands. You're going to see the letters RYFP ad nauseum. You're going to be sick of it. But the only way that you can make some, I'm going to be a fanatic about, are your students, are my teachers, 
am I, are you, are we helping each other reach our full potential? You already know that iron sharpens iron. None of us can get better about being dull. So it has got to be a deep and almost sick passion to making each other better. And I'm talking about individually. I'm talking about inner, you know, inner relationship wise. And I'm talking about as a whole building. The three phases of getting better. We're going to make it happen. It's going to take time, but we're going to make it happen. <laughs> And then you see below that a, a, a math equation, and, and the kids are going to learn this, but this isn't a uh, Ohio standard. E plus R equals O. And you're going to be sick of hearing that. It is the event. Right now we are at an event. Okay, we had a, this wonderful presentation with this uh, softy principle. Uh, and how are you going to respond to that event? What sort of choices are young people making? How can we help them understand that the decisions they make have a serious impact on the outcomes that they get? You make good choices, you have good outcomes. You make silly choices, silly outcomes. Um, and there's a whole model that we'll be following to take our students through some training with understanding how to make better choices. And then the, the three R's that we love here at Greenview are responsible, respectful, and ready. Your students are expected, my teachers are expected, we are all expected to put, um, withstand those three R's. And just understand this, if, you, if we're going to have disagreements, we are. It's not going to be all rosy. We're going to have very hard conversations. That is my job, that is your job as a parent. We are going to have hard conversations, absolutely. I welcome it. But just know this, please know this. I am here, the teachers are here, the district is here. We are here to make good things happen for other people. We have not chosen this profession to, to not do that. I am dedicated to that. If you go down to the office area today, the first thing you will see before you, in, you enter my room is the declaration I made. And as you enter the fourth grade wing, take a look over your right hand shoulder, you'll see that declaration is a declaration to make good things happen for other people. That is why I am here. I, I have had plenty of opportunities to do other things. I am so dedicated to South Euclid Lindhurst. I am so dedicated to Greenview. I am so dedicated to you guys. Because I am here to make good things happen for other people. Am I going to make the best decisions all the time? <laughs> Ask my wife. No. <laughs> okay, but am I going to try really hard? Yep. My intentions are always good. 